Swagatangam. Welcome to Gali Classroom. This is the second lecture in the chapter Resources and Development. In CBSE 10th Standard Geography Chapter 1 Resources and Development. This is the second lecture. Okay sir, what are we going to study in this lecture? We are going to study about overutilization of resources. Because of overutilization of resources, we are facing a global crisis. How are we going to do resource planning? Why is resource planning vital? What are the three steps in resource planning? Let me repeat. This is an important topic. What are the three steps in resource planning? What did Gandhi's uh, talk about resource planning? What is Gandhi's philosophy of conservation? What did Gandhi uh, talk about sustainable development? What is the definition of sustainable development? Then we will look at sustainable development from a global perspective. Sustainable development from a global perspective. Then we will look at sustainable development from Indian perspective. Sustainable development from Indian pers perspective. Okay, let us start about overutilization of resources. Because we are using resources more and more without any limits. Because we are overutilizing the resources. What is happening? Depletion of non-renewable resources is happening. Depletion of non-renewable resources is happening. This is resulting in a global crisis. And what are the symptoms of the global crisis? Global warming. The temperature of the total earth is slightly going up. Ozone layer depletion. The ozone layer that protects our skin from UV radiation is slowly getting depleted. Also, the land is getting degraded because we are throwing away and polluting the land with so many of our waste materials, with so many of our pollutants. Okay, sir. Because we are depleting the non-renewable resources, because we are over-utilizing these resources, what are we creating? We are creating a divided society where the resources are accumulating only in a few hands. So, the entire society is getting divided into categories of people with resources and people without resources. In order to get equitable distribution of resources, what is equitable distribution? Equal distribution means everybody gets equal amount of money. Equal distribution means everybody gets equal amount of money. So, what is equitable? Equitable means everybody gets the resources according to their needs. Oh, do you need only rupees 5? Have rupees 5. Oh, do you need rupees 15? Have rupees 15. Everybody gets resources depending on their own needs. That is called as equitable distribution of resources. And equitable distribution of resources is essential for sustained quality of life and global peace. Sustained quality of life and global peace. Okay, sir. Let give resource planning in a single line. Resource planning is simply a technique for the proper utilization of resources. For the proper utilization of resources. There are three steps to resource planning. What are those three steps to resource planning? Identification and inventory of resources. You need to identify the resources and prepare a list of them. That particular list where you are going to write down the resources are called as inventory of resources. How are you going to accomplish identification and inventory of resources? You are going to do surveying, mapping, measuring the characteristics and properties of the resources. Okay, after the first step, you know what resource is available in what quantity and what quality. What is the second step? You need to develop the resource. How are you going to develop this resource? You are going to do a planning structure. You are going to evolve a planning structure. Okay, with the, with the help of this planning structure, you are going to do resource developmental plans. For resource developing, for developing the resource, what do you need? You need appropriate technology, you need appropriate skill and institutional setup. Sir, give me an idea of this. Let us say you are finding a lot of coal in a particular area. Then you need an institutional setup where the coal can be mined and you need a very big industry where the coal can be converted into heat energy. And from the heat energy, you can generate a lot of electric energy. So you need to put 
thermal plants nearby the area where you found coal that thermal plant need to be managed that's an institution so you need to come up with appropriate technology and skilled people for putting up this particular industry that's basically developing a planning structure for the development of the resources okay sir what about the third step with respect to the third step you need to match the resource developmental plan to the country's developmental plan you need not only develop the resources the resources must be developed the resources must be developed in such a way the country's own development is augmented the country's own development is increased okay sir you talked about gandhian philosophy of conservation what did gandhi tell gandhi told that there is enough resource for everybody's need but there is not enough resource for everybody's greed that's basically gandhian philosophy what else did gandhi talk about sir gandhi told that he did not prefer uh, mass production in the factories but he wanted production by the masses people must be producing content people must be producing goods for themselves they must be self sustainable rather than in numbers rather than goods being produced in very large numbers rather than mass production gandhi ji preferred production by the masses in fact in 1974 the german economist e f schumacher the german economist e f schumacher wrote about the gandhian philosophy of conservation in his book small is beautiful in the year 1987 Brentland Commission report was released which introduced the term sustainable development what is sustainable development sustainable development is a type of development where what you are going to do you are going to do development without damaging the environment sustainable development is a development where the actual development is done without any damage to the environment and also without compromising the needs of the future generation you should not use content resources that must be preserved for the next generation you should not use resources that must be preserved for the next generation that must be preserved for the next generation that's basically sustainable development development without damaging the environment and without compromising the needs of the future generation is called as sustainable development this was talked about in brentland commission and this brentland commission report was later released as a book with the name our common future obviously because we are doing sustainable development we will have a common future okay sir let us look at rio de janeiro uh, summit rio de janeiro earth summit such that we will get a global perspective of sustainable development okay in rio de janeiro earth summit which happened in the year 1992 june 1992 june it addressed the urgent problems of environmental protection socio economic development at a global level they wanted to protect the environment at a global level and also maintain the social and economic development of all the countries okay sir what did they do more than 100 heads of states more than uh, leaders from 100 states from 100 separate countries gathered together and signed a declaration about global climatic change and biological diversity they wanted to maintain the global climate they do not want it to undergo any drastic changes also they wanted to maintain the biological diversity of their own nations so they are endorsing global forest principles what are they endorsing they are endorsing global forest principles and adopted agenda 21 sir what is agenda 21 agenda 21 is a declaration for doing sustainable development in the 21st century agenda 21 is a declaration for having sustainable development in the 21st century 21st century hence the name agenda 21 21st century hence the name agenda 21 okay sir what is 21st century 21st century is basically 2000 to 2100 these 100 years are called as 21st century 2000 to 2100 these 100 years are called as 21st century okay what is agenda 21 declaring sir it is a declaration that was signed at unset what is unset united nations conference of environment and development united nations conference on environment and development it 
unsaid in the sense hmm the declaration agenda 21 aims to achieve i am repeating myself the declaration agenda 21 aims to achieve global sustainable development how are uh, the ent- all the countries going to achieve global sustainable development by fighting environmental damage poverty and disease through global cooperation on common interests and mutual needs through global cooperation on common interests and mutual needs okay let us look at this sustainable development from indian perspective with respect to india we have different kinds of resources we have a very diverse distribution of resources in our country india has diversity in resource availability let us look at a couple of examples like for example in jharkhand chatisgarh and mp we have a rich source of minerals coal deposits minerals and coal deposits in arunachal pradesh we have a lot of water resources but we do not have infrastructural resources like road and buildings in arunachal pradesh we have water resources but we do not have infrastructural resources like road and other buildings rajasthan obviously has a lot of solar power and wind resources but they do not have water resources rajasthan has solar power and wind resources but they do not have water resources india needs proper resource planning why because india in india each and every state has some particular resource in excess and there is a lack of another resource in each and every state there is some particular resource in excess and there is a lack of some other resource so india needs proper resource planning india needs proper resource planning in fact after recognizing this indian government in its first five year plan after independence sir what is a five year plan five year plan is a plan that is done by the government where they will structure the economic policy for five years in such a way that it helps the growth of a industry they will plan the economy of the country in such a way that it helps the growth of a particular industry it will help the growth of let us say dairy industry let us say agriculture let us say steel iron and steel industry so the five year economy of the country will help to grow that particular industry in india's first five year plan efforts were taken to achieve proper resource planning efforts were taken to achieve proper resource planning the land resources in india have a variety of relief features okay let us look at this what are the different types we have plains 43 percentage which are used to for agriculture and industry mountains 30 percentage where perennial rivers are flowing and we have good tourism what about plateau sir 27 percentage where there are a lot of minerals and fossil fuels where there are a lot of minerals and fossil fuels let us look at how land is utilized in india F- land utilization with respect to land utilization we have fallow land fallow land means so what is the definition of fallow land land that is left uncultivated for one complete agricultural year fallow land means land that is left uncultivated for one complete agricultural year what is net sown area sir total area that is sown in the entire country total cropping area of the entire country is net sown area so what is the definition of gross cropped area gross cropped area is nothing but total net sown area plus area sown more than once in an agricultural year plus area sown more than once in an agricultural year sir i am not able to understand gross cropped area give me an example okay let us say in the total of our country we have 100 acres how many acres do we have let us say we have 100 acres so you are adding 100 acres you are adding 100 acres total area uh, total cultivable area where you are sowing here the total cultivable area is 100 acres where you have crops which are which you are going to uh, cultivate throughout the year throughout the total year you have 10 separate acres let us say you have another 10 separate acres this 10 separate acres is sown five times per year it is a very short term crop let us assume you have a very short term crop and you are sowing the short term crop for 10 acres we will be cultivating it five times per year you will be cultivating it five times per year so the gross crop area is 100 acres plus 10 into 5 which is 50 acres a total of 150 acres a total of 
150 acres. So here grass cropped area. Are you able to understand the idea of grass cropped area? Now grass cropped area is net sown area plus area sown more than once in an agricultural year. Okay, what about other non-agricultural use? You are using not lands for also buildings, roads, factories, barren and wasteland. Barren and wasteland means land that is not currently in use. Land that is not currently in use. Land use pattern in India. What is land use pattern? How you are going to use the land is called as land use pattern. It is decided by two factors. Physical factor and human factor. Let us look at physical factors. Physical factors are topology, climate and soil types. Topology, climate and soil types. What is topology? The way the land is distributed is called as topology. Mountains are one kind of topology. Plateaus are another kind of topology. Coastal plains are another kind of topology. So physical factors that determine the land use pattern are topology, climate and soil types. What are the human factors? The human factors are population density, technological capability, culture and tradition. Culture and tradition. That's basically the end of our lecture. Sir, so how are we going to study this lecture? Where should I give more importance? You need to give more importance to resource planning. What are the three steps in resource planning? Identifying, identification and inventorying, evolving a planning structure and matching resource development plans with national developmental plans. You also need to give importance to Gandhian philosophy uh, with respect to one marks. You need to know about the book which was written by German economist E.F. Schumacher, Small is Beautiful and what is the other name for Brundtland Commission, Our Common Future. Okay, so you need to study this part. This part is important and also concentrate how are resources distributed in India. Concentrate on how are resources distributed in India. Why does India need good resource planning? Concentrate on this part. These are the two important segments in this particular lecture. Hope you guys enjoyed this lecture. If you like our lecture, click the bell icon, subscribe to us. Obviously, uh, hit the like button. Cheers and thank you. Hope to meet you guys in the next lecture. Cheers. Thank you, Thanga. Thank you. Cheers.